well friends in the earlier module we have discussed about the matching networks and quarter wave transformer to use for matching the load impedance with the transmission line these are very good techniques however they suffer from some drawbacks we have discussed about the drawbacks also especially different types of losses such as matching or mismatching ra loss rather then the insertion loss reflection loss and so many other things these are the main drawbacks to overcome these drawbacks there is one more technique which is called as stub matching technique single stub and double stub matching techniques that is the topic of today's module the techniques are marvelous and the solutions can be obtained with the help of smith chart in a very easy manner avoiding laborious calculations so let us see what is stub matching after completing this module you will be able to understand the concept of matching stub and different types of it you will be able to understand the mathematical principle behind the stub matching technique and the designing of single stub and double stub using smith chart you will be able to know about advantages and limitations of stub matching techniques what is meant by stub a section of a transmission line having small length is called as a stub two types namely single stub and double stub comprising of one or two stubs are in common use a section of a two wire transmission line of small length l connected in parallel to the line to be matched at a distance d from the load as shown is known as a single shunt stub the stub may or may not have its characteristic impedance the same as that of the given transmission line however generally the stub is chosen so as to have the same characteristic impedance as that of the given transmission line similarly the stub may be short circuited or open circuited at its open end however short circuited stub is preferred because practically it is easier to achieve a reliable perfect short circuit rather than a perfect open circuit thus a short circuited stub of proper length l connected at proper distance d serves the purpose of a perfect match determining precise values of l and d are the main computations involved in stub matching technique the values of distance d and the length l of the stub depend upon whether the stub is desired to be inductive or capacitive different types of arrangements of stubs can be found in literature some of the types of matching stubs are as shown what is the mathematical basis for designing of a particular type of stub the answer is simple a simple concept of impedances in parallel is used to derive the necessary equations needed to compute the value of normalized stub impedance ys once the normalized stub impedance ys is known the values of d and l can be obtained easily using smith chart so let us see how to derive the equation needed to compute the values of normalized stub impedance ys consider the circuit with a lossless transmission line of characteristic impedance z0 terminated in a load with impedance zl as shown let vg and zg be the voltage and impedance of the generator respectively assume that the line is matched with the generator hence we have zg is equal to z0 a single stub of length l and characteristic impedance z0s is connected across the points p and p dash in parallel to the transmission line at a distance d from the load let zd be the impedance of the transmission line at a distance d from the load and zs the impedance of the stub now 
for matching of the impedances at the connection of the stub with the line. The impedance between P and P dash as seen from both sides must be equal to each other. It can be easily understood that the impedance between P and P dash seen from the load towards the generator is simply equal to the characteristic impedance Z0 of the transmission line. Let ZPP dash be the impedance across the points P and P dash seen from the generator side towards the load. Let us determine ZPP dash. At the point P, there is a division of signal. A part of the signal enters the stub and the remaining signal passes towards the load. Thus, the two branches, namely the stub and the line of length D between the stub and the load are in parallel. It is easy to understand that when seen from generator side, ZPP dash equals the impedance of the parallel combination of ZG and ZS as shown in the diagram. Thus, we have ZPP dash equal to ZD in parallel with ZS and YPP dash which is equal to reciprocal of ZPP dash as Ys plus Yd, where Ys, Yd and YPP dash represent the corresponding admittances. If we divide by Y0, we obtain the relation in normalized form as shown. Note the notations used in the derivation. Here Y0 represents the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, Ys represents the admittance, Yd represents the admission of the line, etc. Please just see the definitions properly. Thus, we have, sorry, cut, slide number 14. Thus, we have two results for admittance. One, admittance across P and P dash, which is YPP dash, that is equal to YS plus YD, as seen from the generator towards the load, and admittance across P and P dash equal to Y0, as seen from the load towards the generator. For satisfying the condition of matching, the two impedances must be equal. Thus, we have YPP dash equal to Ys plus Yd that is equal to Y0. Let us call this equation as equation number 1. Dividing both sides of this equation by Y0, we obtain the equation in normalized form as shown. Equation number 2 can be rearranged to obtain expression for Ys as follows. Equation number 4 plays an important role in determining stub position and its distance from the load using Smith chart. If the characteristic impedance of the stub is equal to the characteristic impedance of the line, that is, if Y0 is equal to Y0S, then equation 4 reduces to Ys is equal to 1 minus Yd. I think this much background is sufficient for designing a single stub. Let us try to understand how the two quantities, namely stub length L and its distance D from the load can be determined using Smith chart. Instead of discussing theoretically, let us discuss about it with the help of a numerical example. The statement of the problem concern is as shown. The problem reads like this. Here we have a lossless transmission line of characteristic impedance 50 ohm terminated in a load impedance of 100 plus J 50 ohm. We have to determine the smallest length L and the distance D from the load of a single capacitive stub matching having characteristic impedance Z0S is equal to 75 ohm shorted at its end which when connected will serve the purpose of a perfect match of load with the transmission line. Note that here the characteristic impedance of the stub is 75 ohm and that of transmission line is 50 ohm. Let us discuss the solution step by step. Note the numerical manipulations at different steps. Step number 1. Compute and plot the normalized load admittance while on Smith chart. 
it be remembered that while using switch chart for calculations involving impedances constant r circle becomes constant g circle while constant x circles become constant s circles let point p represent while here zl comes out to be 0.4 minus 0.2 z step number 2 draw a circle of radius op with o as its center as we know the circle drawn in this way is known as the vswr circle note the points q and q dash in which the circle drawn intersects the r equal to 1 circle now called as g equal to 1 circle of the smith chart note the coordinates gs of the point q and q dash in this problem we have q as 1 minus j as the coordinates and q dash with 1 and j as the coordinates the point q and q dash represent the value of yd in equation number 4 if we want to have inductive stub the point q dash is to be used for yd while for capacitive stub yd is to be taken as point q as per the requirement in the problem we need a capacitive stub hence we will select point q accordingly we have yd is equal to 1 minus j step number 3 calculate the value of normalized admittance ys using equation 4 and plot ys on the smith chart let s represents ys note that the point s will always lie on the r equal to 0 that is g equal to 0 circle and ys comes out to be 1.5j step number 4 join the center o with points p q and s extend op oq and os to meet the radial distance scale marked with towards the generator in points k m and n respectively and note the corresponding readings in the problem under consideration we have k is equal to 0.464 m is equal to 0.338 and n is equal to 0.157 lambda step number 5 for determination of distance of the stub from the load proceed as follows find the radial distance in terms of wavelength between point k and the point m measured along the scale towards the generator this distance gives the value of d in this problem we have d equal to k b dash m which is finally point 374 lambda step number 6 for determination of length l of the stub proceed as follows starting from point b dash on the smith chart move along the scale towards the generator to reach the point n calculate the radial distance traveled in terms of wavelength from b dash to s this distance gives the value of stub length l in terms of wavelengths in the problem under consideration we have l is equal to b dash as which is equal to 0.407 lambda thus finally we have the required values as shown as an exercise you may try to verify the following results note that there might be a little deviation from the expected values single stub matching technique gives two solutions for the stub length out of these two the solution giving smaller stub length is preferred over the other it is because it results in smaller quality factor q which in turn provides larger matching bandwidth it means that the same stub arrangement can be used over a larger frequency range due to smaller stub length the inevitable loss along the transmission line is also reduced in addition it is possible to have a smaller and economically feasible matching network though simple and useful single stub approach suffers from some drawbacks for example with single stub two parameters namely the distance d from the load 
and the stub length L are to be cared for simultaneously. In addition, change of signal frequency can affect one of the two solutions notably. In such a case, it needs to redesign the stub. Due to this and many other reasons, a system of stubs is used depending upon the need and type of application. Uh, well friends, in the discussion so far, we have considered a single stub which is connected in parallel with the transmission line. Can we not have a stub connected in series with the transmission line? The answer is yes, there exists a single series stub. Let us discuss some important point regarding it. The single stub is selected in such a way that the characteristic impedance of the transmission line and the stub they are same. The problem can be solved analytically, however the solutions are very tough and in comparison use of Smith chart gives a quick solution. Let us see some important point regarding it. The stub can be open circuited or short circuited. Accordingly, the design parameters they change. What type of problem we can solve? As an example, let us see a problem. The problem can be stated as follows. Design an open circuit series single stub to match a load with impedance 90 plus 60 Zeo ohm so as to provide a match with transmission line having characteristic impedance Z0 equal to 75 ohm. Assume the characteristic impedance of the stub to have the same value as that of the main transmission line. As stated earlier, the problem can be solved analytically. However, the calculations are much involved and tedious. Slide number 30. Using Smith chart, we obtain the two solutions for open circuit series stub under consideration as shown in the following table. Designers and fabricators take care about slight refinement if necessary of the values obtained from Smith chart. In series single stub tuning, the given transmission line is to be cut at some point which can be an undesirable point. The design may not work satisfactorily for variable load. Due to these and some other reasons, this type of stub, though simple to design, is rarely used in practice. Now let us discuss the double stub matching, which is one of the most commonly used techniques. Generally, in double stub matching, characteristic impedance of the two stubs is taken the same as that of the main lossless transmission line. The two short circuited stubs separated by a suitably chosen fixed distance D2 are connected in parallel to the main line. The values of distance D2 are generally chosen as lambda by 8, 3 lambda by 8, 5 lambda by 8, etc. as per the convenience. The distance of the first stub D1 from the load is also held fixed and is kept adjustable if needed to have proper tuning. Thus, here knowing the distances D1, D2, the load impedance ZL and the characteristic impedance Z0, it is expected to determine the lengths L1 and L2 of the two stubs. Let us discuss about the mathematical basis for double stub matching. Since we are using the two stubs in parallel to the main transmission line, the mathematical analysis is done using admittances rather than using impedances. The following two equations form the basis for the mathematical formulation of double stub matching. The capital letter Y is used to represent actual admittance while small letter Y is used to represent normalized admittance. Note that the equations involve admittances since the stubs are in parallel with the transmission line. One can easily understand the symbols of the admittances in these two equations. Now, since the characteristic impedance of the stubs is the same as that of the main transmission line, the two equations in normalized form 
can be written as shown. It be noted that the stubs may be open circuited or short circuited. The analytical treatment for determining the values of stub lengths is tedious and somewhat complicated. A computer simulation software developed by some researchers for designing double stub can be found to be documented in literature. Instead of dealing with analytical treatment, let us try to understand the stepwise procedure which will enable us to solve a simple problem related with double stub matching using Smith chart. As an illustration, consider a problem which can be stated as shown. Here, a transmission line with characteristic impedance 50 ohm is terminated in a load impedance ZL equal to 120 plus 105 J ohm. We have to design a short circuited double stub with the specifications as given. Distance of the nearest from the load D1 equal to U lambda, separation between the two stubs D2 equal to T lambda and characteristic impedance of both the stubs is equal to Z0. Please note here it is a general discussion U, T etc. can be taken as per our convenience while designing the problems of this type. In literature, the procedure for solving such problems can be found to be described in a very brief, precise and technical manner. In comparison, the stepwise solution given here may appear somewhat lengthy. However, for a beginner, it can serve the purpose as a systematic approach for understanding various steps in obtaining the solution avoiding any serious mistakes. Note the numerical values calculated at different steps. Step number 1. Calculate and plot the normalized load impedance ZL on the Smith chart. Let point P represent it. Step number 2. Draw a circle with O as its center and OP as radius. As is known to us, the circle is known as VSWR circle. Extend PO towards O to meet the VSWR circle drawn at point Q. The point Q represents the normalized admittance while. Step number 3. Calculate the angle theta which is 72 into T degree. Rotate the diameter OB of R equal to 1 circle about O through an angle theta in the anti-clockwise direction and obtain the point B1 on R equal to 0 circle. Obtain the midpoint O dash of the line OB1. Draw a circle with O dash as the center and O dash as its radius. This circle is known as spacing circle or auxiliary circle in literature. Step number 4. Extend the line OQ towards Q to meet the radial distance scale at point T on the scale marked with towards generator. Note the reading at point T. Let us adopt the convention of representing the measurements at any point by the letter representing the point itself. Accordingly, the reading at point T will be T. Step number 5. From point T, move a distance u lambda along the distance scale marked with towards the generator in the clockwise direction to reach the point T dash. Note the reading T dash at point T dash. If T plus U exceeds 0.5, then calculate T dash by subtracting the integral multiples of 0.5 from the sum T plus U until T dash is less than or equal to 0.5. Step number 6. Join points O and T dash. Note the point V of intersection of the line OT dash with the VHWR circle that is the circle with OP as the radius and O as the center. The point V represents the value of YD1. It be noted that YD1 has only one value while the other normalized admittances and hence the stub lens will have 
two possible values. Number seven, note the real part, say V R of V. Find the points F and F dash of intersection of the R equal to V R circle with the spacing circle. Then F represents Y11 and F dash represents Y11 dash. Step number eight: calculate and represent the difference F minus V by point H on the R equal to zero circle. Similarly, calculate and represent the difference F dash minus V by point H dash on the R equal to zero circle. The points H and H dash. are purely imaginary and represent the two values of normalized admittance of the first step namely ys1 and ys1 dash respectively step number 9 extend the lines oh and oh dash to meet the distance scale mark towards load at points k and k dash respectively note the readings at point k and k dash on the scale step number 10 Since we are dealing with short circuited stub for determination of stub lengths the measurements are to be made with respect to the point B dash of the speed chart move from point K along the distance scale towards the load in the anti clockwise direction and measure the distance up to the point B dash this distance gives L1 which is the length of the first stub step number 11 move from point k dash along the distance scale towards the load in the anti clockwise direction and measure the distance up to the point b dash this distance gives l1 dash which is the second solution for the length of the first stub step number 12 now draw a circle with o as its center and of as its radius note the point d of intersection of this circle with r equal to 1 circle the point d represents the value of the normalized admittance yd2 of the second stub note that the angle between of and od measured from of in clockwise sense must be theta step number 13 again draw another circle with o as its center and of dash as the radius note the point d dash of intersection of this circle with r equal to 1 circle the point d dash represents the second solution for the value of the normalized admittance y d2 dash of the second stub note that here also the angle between of dash and od dash measured from of dash in clockwise sense must be theta step number 14 calculate s is equal to 1 minus d and s dash is equal to 1 minus d dash plot points s and s dash on the switch chart which will obviously lie on the r equal to 0 circle step number 15 extend the lines os and os dash to meet the distance scale marked with towards load at points e and e dash respectively step number 16 move from point e along the distance scale in the direction towards load to reach the point b dash the distance measured in this way from e to b dash gives the length l2 of the second stub step number 17 move from point e dash along the distance scale in the direction towards load to reach the point b dash the distance measured in this way from e dash to b dash gives the second solution of the length l2 dash of the second stub thus finally we have the two solutions as recorded in a tabular form as shown the complete solution on the switch chart will look as shown as an exercise you may try to verify the results for double stub matching shown in the table Dear friends how do you feel the procedure may appear lengthy however after practice you will be able to do all the steps speedily try to understand the brevity in describing this procedure found in standard text and references 
If you want to frame your own problems on designing a double stub, how will you proceed? Just think. We know that due to impedance matching, the reflected voltage or current along the given transmission line is eliminated. Maximum power transfer from the source to the load is also achieved. The VSWR becomes unity implying the fact that there are no voltage peaks on the transmission line. Due to impedance matching for any length of transmission line, the input impedance equals the characteristic impedance. In other words, impedance matching makes the input impedance independent of the length of transmission line. It be noted that though after impedance matching, there is no reflected voltage or current along the given transmission line, there are reflections on the stub and also along the small part of the transmission line of length D between the stub and the load. Slide number 57. Matching devices known as stub tuners which are basically impedance transformers designed to introduce a variable shunt susceptance into coaxial transformation line find various applications. Power and attenuation measurements, tuned reflectometric measurements, providing a DC return in single-ended mixers and detectors, etc. are some of such applications. Friends, different types of matching techniques have been discussed by researchers and designers working in this field. The introductory aspects discussed in this module can be useful for understanding the contents therein. For the time being, let us take a stop here. As a summary, we may remember that single step and double step matching are highly useful and easy to implement by using switch chart. In single stub matching, we have to deal with determination of the stub length and its distance from the load. In double stub matching, we have to deal only with the stub lengths. That is an advantage. Using single stub or double stub, the losses such as mismatch loss, insertion loss can be minimized use of smaller stub length can avoid the inevitable loss of power in the transmission line. Thank you.